Hello, hello again friends and loyal Wolfpack members, Chaos Wolf here and welcome back to the Elite Dangerous 1.5 beta server. Now this is the ship I've been looking forward to having a go of uh, almost as much as, our, as uh, the, uh, the Federal Corvette. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the Viper Mark IV and I love the look of this ship. I mean, I loved my uh, Viper Mark III. It was my, one of my favourite ships early in the game. Uh, and it's now had a serious upgrade. Now this ship is a lot chunkier than her Mark III sister. She has a lot of uh, fins added around the outside to add extra girth and uh, she, she's just generally a lot more chunky. Uh, she looks like the cross between a vulture and a viper. But again, it's pretty much got the distinct viper feel to it. And I'm really liking this ship. I have a feeling that when 1.5 goes live, I think Commander Ducky might be trading in her Cobra Mark III, uh, Vi Cobra Mark III for a Viper Mark IV, perhaps. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. But I really, really do like the look of this ship. But anyway, that's enough uh, of me drooling on the exterior. Let's go and uh, have a look are at uh, the inner side of the cockpit. I mean, come on, Chaos, stop looking at the outside of the ship. Oh, there we go. So now we are inside and looking around, the cockpit is pretty much a carbon copy of the Viper Mark III. You'd, thought, you'd have thought that they would have actually upgraded this a little bit. I mean, we've even got the bacon strip still at the sides. But it's kind of nice, considering that we might still get hungry. But yeah, it's it's basically the same old cockpit. Uh, nothing too amazing about it, but nothing too bad about it either. The main thing I really like over the Cobras is the fact that we are centralised in the cockpit. Because being off-centre in the cockpit really kind of puts my teeth on edge a little bit, just because it's my OCD kicking, and I, I like to be in symmetry. So I like it, both sides to be the same, so I like to be in the middle. But anyway, let's go and have a look at this in the shipyard and see what its stats are like. Here we go, Viper Mark IV. We have a top cr cruising speed of uh, 271 meters per second, which is, let's go and have a look, it is slower than its uh, sister ship, the Mark III by about 40 meters, well, it's about 39 meters per second slower. And it is 46 meters per second slower in the boost as well. It has also got four out of 10 maneuverability, whereas the standard Viper has six out of 10. But where this does actually start uh, showing its, uh, well, its upgradedness, I should say, is in its jump range. Unladen as stock is over 10 light years. And where with the standard Viper, it is barely seven. So this ship has a massively better jump range. Uh, shields, 103. Let's have a look at the standard Viper, 137. So its shields are not as good, at least as stock. Uh, its armour, though, is, whoa, whoa, 270, whereas its original is 128, uh, 126. So it is more than double the... Um, it is just, uh, well, more than double the uh, the hull armour of the Cobra Mark III, the Viper Mark III, I should say, sorry. <laughs> its hull mass is 190 tonnes in, com in comparison to the 60 tonnes of the original Viper. Uh, it's also got uh, two utility mounts, uh, two small hard points and two medium hard points, which are exactly the same as the uh, Viper Mark III. The main difference is uh, we'll be able to fit some slightly better weapons if we wish. But we'll see how that works. We, as to the internals, we have uh, one class one, two class two, one class three, and two class four. 
Now this is a really nice addition to this ship because the original ship only had uh, a two class threes, a class two and a class one if I remember correctly. This one has, uh, it's lost one of its class threes, gained a class two but it's also gained two class fours as well so this ship's got a lot more internal space which is really really nice so we will be able to use this in a piratey kind of role if we want which would be great for ducky but anyway let's get out of here and let's go and have a look in the outfitting department all right let's go and have a look at the internals we've got our standard sweep uh, lightweight alloys, wood cost, uh, well, not lightweight, military grade, would cost us just shy of 4 million credits, so that's not a lot. Uh, power plant, let's go and have a look here, class descending. Uh, would be just shy of 1.6 million, so the same as the, uh, the Cobra Mark IV, so that's nice. This ship has had an upgrade to its power plant. Uh, so it'll have a maximum power wattage uh, output of 15.6 megawatts, in, unlike its original 12 megawatt output from the, Co uh, from the Viper Mark III. Thrusters, again, are up to Class 4, whereas before they were Class 3. So again, they're going to cost 1.6 million. Uh, the frame shift drive has again been upgraded to a class 4 rather than a class 3, so that will cost us again 1.6, but it'll give us an unladen jump range of over 20 light years. And that's completely stock without even setting it up for uh, being lightweight and possibly an explorer. Now I do have a feeling that this ship might make a fairly nice little exploring ship, uh, because it does have such a nice jump range. Uh, when completely stock. Life support is a class 2, so that's not really uh, that much. It's going to be, be 56,000 to uh, for the best one. And before anybody tells me that I'm saying this wrong again, no I'm not. The prices on the beta server are 10% of the normal server, so that's why it's all looking so cheap. So we just need to move this decimal point across one to get the real prices. Power distributor, this is the one we really want to know, and that is going to be uh, one point, uh, 150,000 credits. So, that, again, not much. Sensors, 150 again. And then we move on to the internals. Now, as you can see, the, uh, the shield generator that we got as standard is actually a class 3. So that's why the shields don't seem so strong on this ship, is uh, because we've not got the most optimal shields uh, generator. I mean, we can go, class descending, shield generator, here we go. It's going to be 1.6 million, and that's going to up our, our shields quite, quite considerably. Uh, we've also got another class 4, so we can put a class 4... Um, shield cell bank in there if we want. We've then got another class 3, two class 2s and a class 1. Along with our planetary landing approach suite. But again, we can't do anything with that as yet. But let's go and have a look at the hard points. We've got two medium on the bottom again and two small on the top. So no surprises there. The, uh, the hard points are in the exact same locations as they were on the Viper Mark III. So let's go and put the standard set of uh, weapons that I usually go for on this and uh, then we'll go and see how well this ship does out uh, first of all in manoeuvring and then out in combat. Okay so here we are with our standard sweep of weapons. We've got two class 1 pulse lasers and two class 2 uh, multi cannons. So again it's the same uh, so again, it's the same weapons as the Viper Mark III that I usually go for. But uh, let's go out and see how well this does out in the field test. Okay, so we are outside the port. Let's go and see how well this thing accelerates from a standing start. Now that is not bad at all, but let's see how well it slows down.
Now again, that's not too bad, but uh, we don't really expect anything less from a small ship. Now let's see how well it boost starts. Now that wasn't bad at all, and that really that boost really did have a throaty growl. I really do like that. Now let's go for another boost. Okay, not bad at all. And let's see how well this thing does in a uh, in a pitch turn. Here we go. Now this is fairly manoeuvrable. Scan detected. So let's go and see how well this does in a boost turn. That wasn't bad at all. So the manoeuvrability, even though it is less manoeuvrable than its uh, lighter little sister, uh, it's still not that bad. But anyway, let's go and see how well this thing does holds up in the hazardous resource extraction site. Alright, well, we've found our first target. Whether or not this is going to end up going well for us is another issue. Because this is a dangerous python. And we're in a, virtually a stock <laughs> Viper Mark IV. Well, let's see how well this goes. So let's keep on this guy, keep the pressure up on his shields. Now I don't know if it's just me, but the weapons do seem to be firing a lot faster on this ship. So let's recharge the weapons a little bit. There we go. Looks like we got him. Should we go and try our luck? He's in a wing. Let's try and keep on the move so his wingmate can't hit us too easily. Just want to get his shields down. Well, there's his wingmate. It's a, uh, it's an asp. I wish we had chaff right about now. Well, we can get this guy down fairly quickly. I hope. There we go. Shields are down. Let's get this guy down at ASAP. And let's get the hell out of Dodge. I somehow, yep, yeah, didn't think so.
But oh well, we kind of learned not to go and take on uh, a wing of some fairly large ships. But anyway, that'll be enough for the combat for now. Let's go and see how well this thing docks. Okay guys, so let's go and see where our docking bay is. Well, let's actually wait for a second. For this cutter to get through. Alrighty, so now he's through, we can actually make our way in and get to our docking pad number 21. Now even though this ship is a lot less manoeuvrable, well not a lot less manoeuvrable, but less manoeuvrable than its little sister, I do think it is still more than manoeuvrable enough to easily put the ship down without much of an effort. So let's get inside and see what I think about this ship, as if it's not obvious already. So what do I think of the Viper Mark IV? Now, I think it's fairly obvious that I really, really like this ship. Uh, when I first saw the pictures of it, I thought it may, I thought it uh, reminded me somewhat of the DeLorean from Back to the Future. Now, it still does remind me a little bit of that, but now that I've actually had a bit more of an up-close look to it, it kind of makes me think more along the lines of uh, the car from Knight Rider kit. And I just really want the ability to paint this uh, ship black. Maybe with a little red stripe on it. That would be awesome. But uh, basically I think this ship has a lot of potential. Uh, I think it is going to be the new go-to ship for pirates. At least in my view. It has the same uh, weapon loadout as the Cobra, and the Viper, the Cobra Mark III and the Viper Mark III. But uh, it's fairly quick, it's very, it's going to be, I think it's going to be very tanky. Uh, it's got a good amount of internal space. Uh, I really do think that this is just going to be an absolutely amazing pirate ship. Uh, but I think it's going to be a great uh, lower level uh, combat ship as well, and bounty hunting ship, and I really cannot wait to have a go of it uh, a little bit more properly in the live servers. But anyway guys, that's pretty much what I think about the Viper Mark IV, and I do hope that this has given you a bit more of an insight to the ship, and uh, helps you decide whether or not you want to go for one yourselves. If so, please do hit those like and subscribe buttons, because they really do help my channel out. Now remember commanders, I've been Commander Chaos Wolf, you've been Epic, I will see you next time, and until then, keep flying and stay shiny. <laughs>